every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. In our major story, Minister Kicks' as emergency meeting of the leadership of Nigeria Medical Association conveys to consider new offers tabled by government and in deadlock. Also in this program, Edo State Governor Adam Sushumole absolves self of blame in crisis rocking the State House of Assembly. National Council of State expresses satisfaction on security briefing, gives assurances that all abducted Chibo girls would be rescued alive. And outside Nigeria, lawyers of South African Paralympian Oscar Pistorius facing charges over the mother of his girlfriend close their defense. And business news tonight. Amendment to strengthen and reposition the Nigerian Deposit Corporation gets stakeholders back in. And on sports, tributes pouring for real matter a late legend, Alfredo De Stefano. Begin an update on the doctor's strike as the emergency meeting of the leadership of Nigeria Medical Association has ended in a deadlock. The delegates were to consider new offers tabled by the government on Monday night, but the rules at 5 a.m. on Tuesday without reaching an agreement. The NMA Secretariat says that the meeting was not conclusive, but added the delegates are to resume talks later today. Meanwhile, the Minister of Health, Oyebu Chuchuku, has expressed dissatisfaction with the decision of doctors under the aegis of Nigeria Medical Association to continue with the ongoing strike. Chuku says the federal government had hoped that the doctors would call off the strike after its emergency delegates meeting that ran through Monday to the early hours of Tuesday. According to the minister, the doctors after the meeting insisted on continuing the strike because the federal government offers are not in tandem with the expectations. Chuku, who spoke in Lagos on Tuesday, says the doctors gave three fresh demands revolving around payment of their six-month arrears, approval of skipping of levers for some cadres of doctors, and appointment of other health professionals as consultants as conditions for ending the strike. He lamented that in spite of government efforts to end the strike, the workers remained resolute to continue. He disclosed that the Minister of Health and Finance had begun moves to clear the arrears, adding that matters relating to skipping and appointment of consultants are still in the court. And in the same line, the Senate Committee on Health says it has been meeting with striking doctors with a view to convincing them to end their one-week-long nationwide strike. The Chairman of the Senate Committee on Health, Ifya Yokowa, discussed this when they drew the attention of his colleagues to the doctor strike and its implications. He said members of his committee had met with the national leadership of the NMA, but could not meet with Health Minister Onyebu Chuchuku who, uh, because he was on an official trip abroad. Senator Okowa added that more meetings have been shadowed as part of steps to mediate between the strike conductors and federal government. In his response, Deputy Senate President Ike Kuramado, who presided over the plenary, appealed to the doctors to consider the plight of the patients and go back to work. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Gide Idris, has assured patients diagnosed with cardiac renal failure of efficient and cost-friendly treatment at the newly built Cardiac and Radio Center, 
Magada. Omotayo Alo was at the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the state and the commissioners on the takeoff of the center. In a bid to reduce cardiac and renal diseases in Nigeria, Lagos State Government has signed a memorandum of understanding with RENASCO organization, giving the rights of operation for five years to experts in the field for effective outcome. People who are going to work with are people who are versed in the nuances and intricacies of things like this. They know what ethically they should do, ethically what they should not do. They have to proceed. But again, they're coming up with their own processes and procedures, manuals and protocols that are not very, very, I mean, they're not common, com complex in this environment. These are the things. They have standards, what people should go through. You see a particular case, this is, we should go through this process X, Y, Z, so that at least we ensure quality of care. The Director General of UNESCO, Ladia Woshika, says the equipment provided by Lega State are of high standard capable of delivering excellently well. The costs are going to be affordable, at least if it matches maybe what people do in India or in the Middle East, the same cost. Nigerians will prefer that because when you have to go to those places, you have to take about two or three family members along with you. Those are costs that you won't have to incur here because this is Lagos, your, your family members, that's part of healing. You want your family members around you, you'll be in Nigeria. So even if you are going to pay the same amount that you will have spent in India, uh, for the same outcome that we expect we will provide, then you choose to have it at the Cardiac and Renal Center, Bergada. Idris says the center will not experience any strike by workers because it will be operated like a private organization. 10% of the activities there again of the Indian people will be taken care of by the concessionaires without anything, but every other one, especially those poor people, will take care of. Idris says the center is a specialized and professional facility that Nigerians need for quality health delivery. Omota Yowalo, Court TV News, Lagos. The impeachment proceedings against Governor Mutala Yaku and his deputy Balangilari have exposed the political gap between the two members of the executives. While Governor Yaku has so far enjoyed the support of his party, his deputy Balangilari has been pushed into the wilderness of his own political party. Our correspondent examines the political implications for both men and their parties in this report. It continues to make headlines in the national news lately. Weeks after the State Assembly began impeachment proceedings against Governor Motala Yako and his deputy Bala Ingalari, the All Progressive Congress had kicked against the move alleging external influence. The party says the corruption allegation were created to embarrass Governor Yako, but the People's Democratic Party commended the lawmakers for initiating the impeachment process on Ingalari and his boss. The party executive in the state and about 50 elder statesmen had issued a communique endorsing the impeachment move after deliberations. The regime has entrenched impunity, unconstitutionality, uh, favoritism, corruption, and all sort of things. So no people, no people of good standing anywhere in the world should have this regime or any of such regime in its polity a day longer than they can help. Deputy Governor Bala Ingalari is not pleased with the position of his party on the allegations levied against him by the State Assembly. I serve in purely advisory role and function. My advice is, however, not binding upon the state governor, who is the chief executive of the state and have the final say on all matters arising for the benefit of the state. As can be seen from what I've said, I was assigned to oversee the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. I believe that from what we have demonstrated, what I've been able to demonstrate before you, my documents and otherwise, I was diligent, forthright, and meticulous in carrying out this responsibility. <coughs> I was in no way derelict in the respect of my duty. I didn't divert one cobo. I repeat, one cobo. If anybody has any contrary thing, they can let him bring it. must be something arising from the figment of somebody's imagination. I carry my responsibilities in accordance with the law. In no way did I misappropriate public funds, but 
we should be remember that I cannot call grief instead of any activity that happened after I left the district from us. The All Progressive Congress say the deputy governor got what it deserves. The party not, maybe not making too much noise. Sometimes you need to go back to the drawing board and look at all the allegations that has been placed, purported by the members of the state assembly. And we've come to realize <clears throat> that all that is happening within the state obviously has an external forces. And the problem with the external forces is because they are the people in government and they've tried everything, leaving what the Constitution of the Federal Republic has stipulated. And I think this is a sign of impunity. It was a one ticket affair between Inyako and Balanglari. And now that he said he was not joining the president, I mean the governor, to go to APC, and he now stood his neck in the PDP. Now I think he has seen what we've been talking about, the impunity. The impunity need to stop. It has never, even within the military era, we've never seen the one-term impunity on ground where we are seeing in a democracy, where it is the voice of the people that have brought the people in power. The state's PDP chairman, Joe Madaki, explains the reason for the party's action. If the deputy governor is involved, he is he is level with something, with a case. He can go and clear himself. They are called there to go and clear. Once they clear himself, and that's all. So it will be very, very unfair for the party inviting somebody being a party in a case. It's what we call it, uh, the police call it that um, it's an allegation. The whole thing now is an allegation, both on Yako and on DPT God. You get it right. He was our leader. We never expected anything to be on him until when some people say he is involved. While a constituted panel has commenced investigation into allegations against Governor Yako and his deputy, the tenure of the acting chief judge expires today. Residents fear that it must be another setback in the impeachment process. Edo State Governor Adam Zashumola says he has no hand in the crisis that engulfed the State House of Assembly. Zashumola says it will not allow the People's Democratic Party to intimidate him. He was speaking on the sidelines of the National Council of State meeting in Abuja. Election is coming, 2015, and we have defeated PDP consistently since 2009 that I assume office. Every by-election they lost. The first, uh, uh, the last uh, National Assembly election, we defeated them in the whole of Edo South, which is about 51% of the population. We defeated them in Edo North, which is about 33% of the federation. We restricted them in Edo Central, which account for about 70% of the population. In my own election, with all that they boasted they were going to do, I defeated them in all the 80 local government areas, including the local government of the PDP Godfather. Now, so what they try to do now is having lost the election, having been rejected by the people, knowing that another election is coming, they want to destabilize the state, intimidate my person. And I should read the one uh, Metusela or Lisa Metu or by whatever name is called. He was reported as saying that I am doing what I'm, I'm destabilizing the Indus state because I want to contest for vice presidency. Now, that is studied logic upside down. If I want to contest for vice presidency, do I need to destabilize the government that I currently had? So clearly, they have let out the cut, namely that they are afraid that for the, their own rumor, the ambition that I want to contest for vice presidency. But the point I want to make is that if I decide even to contest for the presidency, PDP cannot intimidate me. I have a right to do so if it is my conviction. Meanwhile, the National Council of State has ended its meeting with assurances that 219 schoolgirls abducted about three months ago from Chibok in Bonu State would be rescued alive. Members of the council talked to journalists at the end of the meeting that they were satisfied with the security briefing they got on the rescue efforts. They also want politicians and religious leaders to exercise restraint in matters of national security. It's the second meeting of the National Council of State. All former heads of states were in attendance aside from retired General Muhammad Buhari. 
Former President Olusha Gwabasanjo was also present at the meeting where the National Security Council briefed members on the security situation. But the key issue at the session, according to council members, centered around efforts to rescue the Chibok girls. The first stop on the security was the issue of the rescue of the Chibok girls, uh, which the military authorities also confirmed that efforts are being met and that uh, uh, sooner than later, that uh, God willing, we'll have good news. And uh, it was also very heartwarming to note that the issue is not whether we can rescue the girls. The issue is how can we rescue them in a way that will ensure their safety uh, so that we don't end up in the attempt to rescue them, we endanger their lives. On general security situation, the council expressed satisfaction with efforts to stem the insurgency. They also want Nigerians to know that the war against insurgency is not a conventional warfare. And so, and then what also came out is the need for Nigerians to be patient that uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, terrorism that we are facing now is a new challenge in Nigeria and worldwide is not something that goes away in a day. And so we have to be very meticulous in our approach and we have to, to make sure that we take the best uh, steps forward to reduce and minimize possible loss of lives in an attempt to curb the insurgents. So we are very satisfied that yes, indeed, we are, the security agents uh, know very well where the girls are located and they are on top of the situation. In addition to the fact that we all agree that the armed forces are doing their best and uh, our men and women in uniform has to be, they deserve accommodation for their effort in the face of these difficulties. And we all have to recognize the fact that just a few years back, most of us in this room, we swear that there can't be a Nigerian who would, who would commit suicide. I mean, uh, we can't have a suicide bomber. That, you know, Nigerians, we enjoy life, we don't like dying. But all of that is history. We now know that there are some of us who are willing to play the role of suicide bombers. There were also appeals for politicians and religious leaders to show more restraint on issues relating to national security. We need to come together. The whole Nigerians need to come together in order to fight this. And then the other one is the issue of politicizing this issue. We need to be in our sense in such a way that we don't play politics with the lives and property of people. So that those who are playing politics with it, when there is nobody to govern, then who are you going to govern? So it is important that we all come together, and that is what was like. The National Council wants the populace to show more support for the federal government and security forces to ensure that the war against insurgency is won. Lagos State Governor Babatade Fashola advised artisans in the state to be security conscious. Fashola gave the advice at a town hall meeting aimed at explaining the activities of the Lagos Homes Ownership Mortgage Schemes. Abiola Luwali was there. His report was presented from our studios. The response by a different group of artisans was encouraging. The purpose is to intimate the artisans about various programs of the Lagos State Government. These include the ongoing registration of commercial drivers, which the governor says is free of charge. The meeting also deliberated on how the artisans can benefit from Lagos Homes Initiative. Governor Fashala says the meeting is a follow-up to the research of government to ensure the operators of informal sectors benefit from the Lagos Homes Initiative. What we need to do now is how to help them order they are record keeping in such a way as to qualify because artisans, tradesmen don't earn their money monthly on the same scale that salaried employees do. Their income come, sometimes they earn money for a whole year in one transaction, sometimes there's a lot. So those are the things that we've been talking about and I think that there's a lot more understanding now. We always plan that we would have this town hall meeting. So many other issues, especially challenges of security, have now made it auspicious to deal with everything together. The interactive session is expected to help artisans take decisions that would eventually improve their living standards. You're watching Cool TV Primetime News live from Lagos. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more stars. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. 
Please remain seated and ensure your seat belts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 cover per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. This one wash challenge you test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel. PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Cool TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 A 24 hour news station You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live And welcome to Call TV Primetime News To follow us on Twitter Click on Twitter icon on our website And Facebook Click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Welcome back. The People's Democratic Party candidate in the Oshun Governorship election, Iyola Omishere, has moved his campaign train to Ejibu, local government area of the state. A correspondent, Frank Molape, was there and filed the report. The massive turnout at Ejibu was impressive. The music continued unabated. <laughs> The royal convoy is also not left out. The campaign train seems to be a means of all sorts of people. Some party supporters describe the turnout as symbolic to change and the will of the people. For the past four years, the electorates have they've experienced PDP as a party, they've experienced APC as a party. The crowd will tell you what the people want. As to house campaign. What to what campaign, village to village campaign, town to town campaign, city to city campaign. We want to know how many supporters we have in the villages, how many supporters we have in the towns, how many, how many supporters we have in the city. And that is how, by the time we finish our campaign, we'll be able to tell you exact, exact figure of our result. Electionary campaigns are usually characterized by promises which many say are often unfulfilled. In Yolao Mishere says he will use his government to improve the standard of education in Oshu. Education policies, infrastructure policy, health policy, they are all in comatose, transported, without a vision. And any policy that's not thought of is dead on, on arrival. So, what I'm going to do is by God's grace, from the 9th of August, I'm going to turn schools back to the owners, cancel the uniform, uniform, uniform across the board, and improve the economic standard of the state. While accusing the current administration of misappropriation, Omishere assured the retirees and pensioners of regular payment of their benefit when voted into office. Pensioners, they are dying for lack of funds. APC government has consumed, has stolen our monies abroad. I want to assure you that personalities will be paid promptly. Salaries will be paid promptly, and all pensioners will be paid promptly. The People's Democratic Party seems confident of victory, promising to continue campaigns in neat efforts to win the hearts of voters. Frank or Malape, Core TV News, AG Bosch State. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress has lampooned the People's Democratic Party and its governorship candidate, Iyolo Mishere, for the electionary stunt ahead of the August 9 poll in Oshun State. Omishere was recently pictured with roasted corn, a popular meal among the masses in what was termed the fireshade effect following the streetwise tactics of the governor elect of Ekiti State. APC criticized Omishere for the masked security man following him around and for his made for television eating of roasted corn and riding commercial motorcycle. In a statement issued in Abuja by the National Publicity Secretary of the Party, Lai Mohammed, APC says Omishere is afraid of his own shadows, hence his use of masked security men. Mohammed added that he wondered how a man who wants to rule a state would be afraid to move freely among the same people whose votes is conversant. The APC spokesman advised the PDP candidate to emulate Governor Rauf Arugbashala, who the party claimed as barely distinguishable from the ordinary citizens of the state. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it has been distributing permanent voter cards to duly registered persons in Oshun State since March 2014. INEC spokesman Kyle Edo debunked rumors that the process has been deliberately hindered. The commission urged prospective voters in Oshun State who have not collected their voter cards to urgently do so ahead of the governorship election scheduled for August 9. He said that the clarification is necessary against the backdrop of calls on the commission in recent times to ensure timely distribution of the cards. It added that the, com the commission distributed the voter cards at the polling unit level in Oshun State from March 7 to 9 simultaneously with the conduct of the exercise in Ekiti. He revealed that in line with the commission's guideline, uncollected permanent voter cards are now at the 30 local government offices of the commission in Oshun State, awaiting legitimate holders to collect them. INEC insists that it will not allow proxy collection to prevent abuse of the cards by unscrupulous elements. The House of Representatives has asked the Nigerian Customs Service to be more proactive in checking the activities of economic saboteurs, saying that the nation's borders are as porous as ever. They demanded an end to the influx of goods that are seen as threats to local industries. The lawmakers unanimously agreed that stiffer penalty be taken against custom officers who collaborate with smugglers. then is supposed to have a policy to encourage the production of local products. In the case of Nigeria, there are some bans on some of these products to encourage the local production of these products. Our committee on customs and exercise should go into ways to find ways of making the customs more effective and less corrupt. The mandate that the Nigeria Custom and Exile has is to prevent the illegal entrance of goods and services to our country. But rather than check that, what we have in place is a situation where even the custom officers are abating in the smuggling of prohibited goods into our country. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, it is something that should be of great concern to all of us if our government has to work. The monarch of Oshogo land, Jimo Uyetunji, has unveiled programs designed to mark the annual Oshun Oshogo Festival. Olajimo Kionlatuji was there and filed in the support. The excitement associated with the annual celebration of the popular Oshun Oshogo Festival has been rekindled. No fewer than 300,000 people from across the globe attend the festival yearly. Historically, Oshoigbo is the queen and original founder of the ancient town. She was said to have achieved so much success, which helped to establish the town. Oshoigbo is acclaimed to be the goddess of fertility, protection, and blessing. At a forum organized to unveil the programs ahead of the festival, the Ataoja of Oshoigbo land, Jimo Yetunji, says innovations and fresh programs have been designed to further boost the culture of the Oshogo people. I thought that is going to emerge in majestic ways and then it will be lively with people that come to celebrate with me. We have created artist village that we want to people to know 
because we have a lot of artists in Oshobo, this, and uh, we have an artist village very close to the groove. There is a lot of drum, music, dancing, and a lot of people are coming from the U.S. They are already uh, make their statement on email and telephone. They will be coming from Brazil also. So we are expecting a lot of fun and place during this festival. They carry the old pilgrimages at this time for cleansing, for prayers, and all such things. It has been on for more than 500 years. It's now part of our culture, part of our system. Yearly, we never miss it. And because of the influence of the UNESCO, it has brought more awareness among the artists, among the people indigenous, even non-indigenous, the whole of your bodies. We are now involved in this celebration. So it's now boasting the um, tourists in that area. Though it promotes culture as well, you know, in school, they might ask them, even in Oshogo there, they might ask them about Oshogo Festival. I believe some of the children cannot even say anything about the festival. Now we are trying to put some things, we are trying to put some programs to make it more elaborate, more interesting for the people. The Oshun Groove is one of the two World Heritage Sites in Nigeria enlisted by UNESCO. The festival has maintained its originality for a very long time. Olajumoke Olatunji, Cool TV News, Lagos. It's time now for some business news with Sir Ben Izoko. That's coming up shortly after this break. This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 koba per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. Cool TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733-01453-3407 A 24-hour news station. Nigerians continue to Tonight, the city of Lagos brings a dog as all who say to you on Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. A federal high we news. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24 hour news station. Hello there, you're welcome to the world of business with me, Sabena Izoku. The stakeholders in the finance sector have expressed support for the proposed amendment to strengthen and reposition the Nigerian Deposit Corporation, uh, Corporation to be a key stabilizing and revitalizing tools in the Nigerian economy, making it more effective in its operations and more responsive to the expectation of depositors. On his part, Umari Ibrahim, NEIC Managing Director and the CEO expressed optimism that the proposed amendment will greatly impact on the corporation's ability to perform its functions more effectively towards achieving its set goal. 
are becoming one of the leading deposit insurers in the world. Ibrahim stated that the proposed amendments will help in protecting depositors and contribute to the stability of the financial system through effective supervision of insured institutions. In Maintain that the proposed amendment, when passed into law, will ensure a safe and sound banking system in Nigeria, stressing that a deposit insurance scheme remains a financial guarantee established to protect depositors in the event of the bank failure and also to offer a measure of safety for banking system. The NDIC manager director, however, noted that any attempt to whittle down the power of the corporation as a risk minimizer will be counterproductive to the stability and safety to a banking sector. The federal government, in collaboration with the local government, has unveiled plans to spend a whopping gulf of 50 billion naira for the implementation of the 2014 Millennium Development Goals project. Senior Special Assistant to the President on MDGS, Precious Bimno who gave the hint at the opening of the sensitization and training workshop for 2014 conditional grants scheme to local governments in Nigeria told journalists that each benefiting local government area is to pay the sum of 100 million naira. Under the arrangement, President Goodluck Jonathan approved the release of 25 billion naira as federal government's counterpart funding, while all the 250 benefiting local government areas are to provide the balance of 25 billion naira. Binor also expressed satisfaction over the successes recorded through funds channeled via the conditional grant scheme and channels department relief gains to state and local governments across the country. According to her, no fewer than 103,067 households and 1,074 agricultural cooperators, microcredit grants benefited from the provision of the conditional cash transfer initiated under the MDGS, initiated for the year under review. The federal government estimates that it can grow the nation's pension asset by almost 300% from $27.2 billion March 2014 figure to $100 billion, that's about 15.5 trillion naira in the next two decades. Speaking in Abuja at the World Pension Summit, President Gilluck Jonathan said, this leap in the pensions was bought by sustained policy innovation and meticulous management, which had facilitated confidence and credibility in the pension system and administration. From a deficit of about 2 trillion naira in 2004, Nigeria has in 10 years accumulated pension assets to a record of 4.216 trillion naira, showing some 9% of the nation's old gross domestic product and 5% of the rebase figure. The reform initiative established a contributory pension scheme for the public and private sector with a goal to digitize pension payments and streamline payments procedures to ensure prompt and ease of payments of pension benefits. The president, however, stressed that as nations share experiences and seek input, the protection of pensions asset by the payments of retirement benefits as when due will always be the paramount objective. The federal government has disclosed that $500 million Chinese facility for the remodeling of the nation's airport has not been accessed since there is no budgetary provision for it in the 2014 Appropriation Act. 65 companies listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange have collectively paid their shareholders 419.7 billion naira as dividend for the financial year ended December 31, 2013. And on the stock market report, equity transaction on the Nigerian stock exchange ended on a positive note. The Nigerian share, all shares index appreciated by 103.76 points to close higher at 42,861.78 basis points. Also, the market capitalization, which opened at 14.119 trillion naira, rose to close higher at 14.153. 3 trillion naira. In all, a total of 523 million shares valued at 5.13 billion naira were exchanged in 5,363 deals. Report shows that Nestle PLC topped the gainers chart, followed by Dangas Summit PLC, Glasgow Smithline PLC, Presco PLC, and Stambig IBTC. On the other hand, Moby PLC led a loser's chart, followed by Nigerian Brewers PLC, Julius Burger PLC, Webco PLC, and PZ PLC.
Meanwhile, here are the top five trades. And that's it on business news. Coming up next is sport news with Tulu or Xiaomi. Stay with us. Now, sports, I am Tolu, or Jeremy. Mourners paid tribute to Real Madrid great Alfredo de Stefano on Tuesday as his coffin went on public display at the Spanish club's Berbero Stadium. De Stefano died in hospital on Monday, aged 88, uh, following a heart attack. A hero of the all conquering Real side of the 1950s and 1960s, he was also honorary president of the club. Family, fans, footballers and real officials gathered at the club for whom the Argentina bond player scored more than 300 goals across 11 seasons. He won five successive European Cups, eight Spanish league titles and was voted European Player of the Year in 1957 and 1959. Real Madrid's World Player of the Year, Cristiano Ronaldo, tweeted, Legends never die. Thanks for everything, Mastro. Manchester City have signed Malaga goalkeeper Willy Caballero. The Argentine, age 32, joined on a three-year deal for a fee believed to be in the region of £6 million, excluding add-ons. Caballero, who played under City boss Manuel Pellegrini at Spanish side Malaga, was in Manchester on Monday morning to finalise the deal. He becomes the champion's third signing of the summer after the arrivals of midfielder Fernando from Porto and former Arsenal right-back, Bakris Sagna. Caballero is expected to provide backup and competition for England number one, Joe Hart. In the meantime, FIFA's disciplinary committee uh, would take no action against Colombia's Juan Zuniga for the challenge which led to Brazil's superstar Nemo Serra's injury. Never sustained a fractured third vertebra following the 86 minute challenge by Napoli fullback Zuniga during Brazil's 2 1 victory over Colombia in the World Cup quarter final in Fortaleza on Friday. Zuniga needs Never in the back when jumping into him at speed, and the Brazilian was ruled out for the remainder of the tournament as a result of his injury. FIFA's disciplinary panel, which was chaired by Claudio Salsa, studied the video of the incident. But they decided they were unable to consider the matter under the rules as the incident was seen by the match officials. Brazilian police arrested a director from the FIFA partner company in charge of World Cup ticket packages, accusing him of leading a network that illegally sold game passes. A police spokesman says that Rewellen, director of the hospitality firm match, was detained at Rio de Janeiro's luxurious Capocabana Palace Hotel days after 11 people were rounded up in a raid to dismantle the network. Wellen's nationality was not immediately known. Police say the international scorpion syndicate sold thousands of tickets worth millions of dollars going back to the 2002 World Cup in Japan and South Africa. A French Algerian suspect, Mohamed Lamin Fofana, was initially thought to be responsible for the scam after he was among 11 people arrested last week in Rio and Sao Paulo. And in the meantime, in the ongoing FIFA World Cup match between Brazil and Germany, well, uh, the scores are in the favor of Germany as uh, the scoreboard reads 5-0. And in the later part of the match, uh, Germany was able to net another one, bringing it to 6-0. A big thank you to you for watching. I'm Tolu or Jeremy. Over now to Nifemi or Guntui for the rest of the news.
Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. Interesting in FIFA World Cup 2014 indeed. Outside Nigeria now, lawyers defending Oscar Pistorius on charges of modernist girlfriend Riva Stinkham have rested their case, allowing the courts to set August 7 to 8 for closing arguments. Advocate Barry Fox said that the sprinter's defense team had called its last witness herald in the final stages of a high-profile trial that is now in its fifth month. The legal teams from both sides will submit their written arguments to Masipa before the date. The prosecution on July 30 and the defense on August 4. The veteran George warns that these documents must not be made public before oral arguments begin. If found guilty of premeditated murder, Pistorius faces up to 25 years in jail and an abrupt end to his glittering sports career. As South Sudan prepares for its third independence anniversary, the condition in which the people of the country find themselves can only be described as desperate. Hundreds of people have been cut off from life-saving medical uh, care after a hospital run by Medicine Sans Frontiers was ransacked and destroyed. Officials say hundreds of people have been without proper care since February. Go back to Afghan election. Hospital was burnt, looted, vandalized. Um, it was shocking for us, so we were not sure how much we can do. But when we came, the need was enormous. Um, in one day, we admitted 800 kids in our therapeutic feeding center. In a week, we had around 1,400 patients. And if we can give you comparison, last year in 2013, in whole year, we admitted 2,000 kids. And now already in, from 15th May to now, we have around 2,500 kids. They were fleeing in the bush. There was no food access. Um, they had to live on whatever they had in the surroundings. So I think that is the consequences of living in the uh, bush for two months. We received kids with severe malnutrition. The food insecurity was quite high because there was nothing in the market. The market was burned down, no food was available. The South Sudan story wraps it up on Core TV Primetime News tonight. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Thanks for being there.